this module will demonstrate the discharge process for inpatients. The discharge care plan is initiated on admission and is split into four sub areas. On admission, which should be completed within 24 hours of the patient being admitted. Complex discharge is to review complex needs of patients and refer to IDT for complex needs if required. Rapid discharge can be completed for patients that are end of life and prior to discharge, which includes the key discharge dates and the discharge safety checklist, which we will cover in this video. The discharge care plan is to be completed throughout the patient's stay is to act as an aid memoir which includes areas such as inform next of kin, carer, care home of most recent plan for discharge. Completing the discharge planning and risk assessment tool will help staff to forward plan potential referrals to IDT. Ward staff can use the discharge dashboard to identify patients who are ready for discharge. The patient record can be opened by clicking on the patient name and ensuring the discharge workflow has been selected, you can check that all fields required for discharge have been completed. Nursing staff are responsible for completing the discharge safety checklist and key discharge details. The safety checklist should only be completed on the day of discharge when the patient is physically ready to leave the hospital. Click the drop down next to the plus icon and select discharge checklist. Fields that are denoted with a blue asterisk pull through to the discharge dashboard. You can add comments to a safety checklist that has already been completed, as shown here. Ensure all sections are complete and accurate at the time of discharge. Once the form is complete, use the tick to sign and finalise the checklist. The other area for the nursing staff to complete is key discharge information. This includes key discharge dates and key discharge details. For the details form, you would record the discharge method and destination. Here we are recording the most common of discharge with consent to the usual place of residence. Enter the date and time of discharge and the discharging staff member before signing the form. It is the doctor's responsibility to complete the problem list and to create the discharge summary. If you need to add information to a discharge summary after the initial document has been signed, enter the information using the workflow sections. Here we have added some text to the shared clinical summary. Click the link and you will be prompted to either open an existing note or create a new one. Always select open existing note. You will then be prompted to addend or revise the note. Unlike any other clinical note, always select Revise Note when adding information to a discharge summary. Selecting Addend Note and signing a new version will result in all users only being able to addend the note in future. This is problematic as subsequent updates within the discharge workflow will not be pulled through to future versions. This is one of the reasons to only create the final discharge summary document when the patient is physically ready to leave the hospital. Once the document opens, use the refresh button at the top to ensure all information within each component is updated successfully within the document. This function will not work if you select Addend Note. If the document has images inserted, you may receive this message. You can see that the text we added is now visible in the document. Click Sign and the discharge summary will be updated. 